Okay, joining us now is Mary Margaret Olihan, reporter from The Daily Signal. Mary Margaret, welcome. Great to see you. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So I want to go back actually to yesterday for the March for Life. I know that you were out there yesterday reporting. Kind of uh, tell us what you saw and what you heard when you were out there. Well, it was a freezing cold day, very, very cold, but despite the weather, so many people came and were marching for the unborn. We saw so many college students, despite some pandemic restrictions at their universities, they all came. Families, young people, high schoolers, it was so much fun. Father Mike Schmitz, as we all know, was yeah. speaking. So wonderful. Oh, the man is a celebrity at the <laughs> Martin for Life. Certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> and so many other, you know, small conservative speakers and little conservative mini celebrities <laughs> all milling around the mall, all these young people. It was a great time. And I was very impressed by how everyone was out there despite the cold all day long. I know my mother and my brother came, were out there for maybe eight hours. <laughs> it's oh, ridiculous. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Mayor Margaret, I wanted to get your thoughts on something that happened the night before the March for Life, a group that calls themselves Catholics for Choice, um, projected images up on the Basilica of the National Shrine saying things such as, pro-choice Catholics, you are not alone. I wanted to get your reaction. I believe you're an alumna from Catholic University. Isn't that right? I am. I am an alumna from Catholic University. So Catholics for Choice is very interesting to me because they're very, very obviously not in accord with the Catholic Church, which teaches that abortion is a crime against human life. I've spoken to the president of Catholics for Choice, Jamie Manson. Uh, Jamie Manson is aware of what the Catholic Church teaches on abortion, but she just chooses to ignore that. So this this little episode at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception was very blatant propaganda, attention-seeking act, where they wanted everyone to look at them and to say, oh, this is this Catholics for Choice group. We should be paying them more attention. They're probably hoping that Democratic strategists will look at them and say, oh, we should we should give them more money. We should help them get more public public attention and be more in the public eye. Mm, fascinating. What was the reaction? I know that you were kind of out in the streets during the march talking to people about that. What, what reaction did you get from them? A lot of people were really upset. I know a lot of Catholic University students who I spoke to some of them yesterday, they were really unhappy about this. They were actually, I wouldn't just say unhappy, they were aghast mm -hmm. that someone would do this, that someone would project anti-Catholic, pro-abortion sentiment on the largest shrine in the United States, North America. Um, but given yesterday the March for Life, how strong the March for Life is, how massive it is, I think a lot of people are aware of the effect that the pro-life movement has on opponents of the unborn, on those who do not stand for Catholic teaching. And I even spoke with Bishop Burbage yesterday at the march. He said, if you look at the strengths of the pro-life movement, you realize that is why there's so many evil opponents that are coming and coming out of the woodwork to fight against us. And for example, Catholics for Choice, they were so worried about the massive impact of the March for Life that they felt the need to project that on the National Shrine, and that tells you a lot. It really does. It does indeed, yes. Shifting gears, I wanted to get your thoughts on a new Marist poll that was just released two days ago showing that 71% of Americans support pretty significant limits on abortion. What do you think of that? Well, it's really interesting, Prudence, particularly because we're so often told that most Americans support Roe. Mm. And we're told that by the media, Democratic lawmakers, strategists. But the reality of it is most Americans don't know what Roe v. Wade means. They're taught that Roe means that women have the right to choose. Well, what does that mean? And so when you break it down and when you ask people specifically, well, do you support abortion after uh, the first month? Do you support abortion after the second month or second trimester? Excuse me. Um, a lot of Americans get really worried about that and they start thinking, okay, well, what does that mean? Can the baby feel pain? Is the baby going to be uh, dismembered? What does that look like? And so when you break it down for Americans and specifically ask them these questions, they're not supporting it. Mm -hmm. Americans want restrictions on abortion. They also are pro-laws that protect the unborn baby and the mother. If you phrase it that way and you say, would you like to protect both the mother and the unborn baby? Most Americans want to. And so these polls that we're seeing from CNN or from other very liberal publications, they're phrased in such a way as to make it appear that most Americans support Roe v. Wade, when in fact that is not true. Yeah. Before we let you go, wondering if you can tell us what you're working on right now. Well, we're working on so many different things. We are talking to a lot of different pro-life activists, um, Republican lawmakers about what they have in store in the event that Roe is overturned. And we heard a lot yesterday at the March for Life and at different pro-life events that Republicans and pro-life activists are getting ready for Roe to be overturned. And they really believe it's going to happen, as I'm sure you hear every day. 
And so what does that mean for what's ahead? What kind of um, grassroots activism are we going to be seeing? Right. How are people going to respond at a very basic level to more women being pregnant and these women that won't be able to get abortions? What, how are you going to respond to them? How are you going to help them? Mm. Mary Margaret Olihan of The Daily Signal, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me.